Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. It is now over. The third impeachment trial in history of a sitting American president ending today in an acquittal. But it wasn't a partisan vote as was expected. Republican Senator Mitt Romney breaking ranks with the president and his own party, announcing a vote to convict President Trump. It was a flagrant assault on our electoral rights, our national security, and our fundamental values. Perhaps the most abusive and destructive violation of one's oath of office that I can imagine. President Trump last night delivered his third State of the Union address in the very same chamber in which he was impeached by the House. He avoided direct mention of the trial, but sent a message to Congress. We must never forget that the only victories that matter in Washington are victories that deliver for the American people. Two other news, new at six, a man accused of sexually assaulting a seven-year-old boy in a San Antonio movie theater restroom comes face to face with the child's father. That was the scene in court today. Christopher Branham pleaded no contest to the assault charge and was sentenced to 35 years in prison. Our Paul Venema was there. Prior to sentencing, the child's father, who we will not identify due to the sexual nature of the case, told how the attack has affected his son. He is definitely uh, an introvert now. Uh, he's uh, great, started to go away, uh, won't do anything by himself anymore. It's affected our entire family. He explained that the family of seven was at the movies here, which at the time was the Rialto Theater on May 19th of 2018. His son returned from the restroom and told his mother of the attack. He is just a sexual predator, Your Honor. He has poor impulse control. He uses drugs, he uses alcohol. Ramsey noted that Branham was out on bond in a similar sexual assault case at the time. He asked the judge to sentence Branham to 35 years in prison, which the plea agreement called for. Branham's lawyer asked for probation. It's pretty clear that he is not someone who suffers from pedophilia, but lack of impulse control. We're asking this court to sentence him to probation, Your Honor. I'd just like to say I'm very sorry. Um, if I could take it back, I could. I would. From the judge, a quick reply. I see no reason to do anything other than order that you serve the 35 years. One more thing. Once he's released from prison, Brendan will have to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. Today's other top stories, the father of a man shot in the stomach at the Marbach Park apartment complex this morning says he is not surprised by the violence. In fact, he says the area is a hot spot of criminal activity. 31 year old William Jackson Jr. in critical condition but expected to recover. His father tells us he believes his son was shot trying to fend off would be car burglars. He also says he believes his son's friends are going to take matters into their own hands before police find the suspects. It looks like a big gang member gathering in my son's hospital room and they're going to find out the two men that did it and they're going after them. Police said neighbors told them the people responsible for the shooting fled in a silver Cadillac. Two men are recovering this evening after they were shot on the city's west side and there seem to be a lot of questions about why. Police say one man was shot in the leg and the other was shot in the leg and wrist. It happened around 1230 this morning in the 7600 block of Stagecoach near Loop 410 and Highway 90. Police say the victims told them that someone wearing a dark hoodie walked up to them and started shooting. That's when they ran and called for help. So far, no arrests have been made. The police say they are still looking for a suspect wanted for killing a woman a little more than three years ago. Police say someone stabbed 31 year old Maria Rodriguez to death inside her apartment back in December of 2016. It happened in the 2500 block of Jackson Keller. Not many other details have been given, but if you have any information which could lead to an arrest in this case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Your information could earn you a reward. Caught on camera again and arrested again. A Bear County man was taken into custody last night for the second time in days. This time after investigators say he was seen performing a sex act on a neighbor's front porch. Sarah Acosta spoke with Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar about this string of indecent incidents. 
34-year-old Gilbert Ramos, who was arrested last Friday for indecent exposure, arrested again last night. And the new allegations all caught on camera. An affidavit says Ramos was arrested Tuesday and charged with stalking after a resident showed deputies two separate videos of Ramos performing a lewd sex act. The first incident happening last year in November and then again Tuesday morning. It's, it's quite clear that this suspect has not gotten the message to this point. Thankfully, though, uh, doorbell video has played uh, you know, a big part in this case. Uh, you know, we're able to gather enough information to file a felony case on him yesterday. Video from last Friday's incident shows him walking up to another resident's front door naked. Ramos bonded out, then was seen walking around by residents in a thong near a school bus stop Tuesday morning, according to the Bear County Sheriff's Office. You know, these these kiddos are, are just minding their own business, going on, on, their, on the school bus and, and, and going to school and they don't need to see that. And if it continues, we'll continue to file appropriate charges on him as needed. Online records show that Ramos remains in jail for a stalking charge. His bond is set at $12,000. This time, investigators have requested Ramos to have a GPS monitor if he bails out. From North Bear County, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. The Centers for Disease Control announcing a group of people who were in China and potentially exposed to the coronavirus are arriving here tomorrow. They will now be housed at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland, which is one of four coronavirus quarantine zones in the United States. Right now, a town hall meeting underway for military personnel and their families at Lackland. Earlier today, city officials stressed that there are no cases of the coronavirus in Bear County or in Texas, but they still answered questions about the coronavirus, including what it means to have coronavirus evacuees at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. From what we have seen since this outbreak began in December 2019 was that the risk of exposure to contract this infection is only among folks who are exposed to this virus. Dr. Curian with Metro Health says people that are being quarantined in these military installations are being isolated away from the general population and that people working at quarantined areas will be using airborne protective equipment like face shields, goggles, gloves, and gowns. Learning you have cancer is a hard truth that millions of people across the world grapple with every year. Here at home, the Mays Cancer Center at UT Health San Antonio sees around 30,000 patients a year. A common form of treatment is radiation therapy, but a lot of people fear that those rays could affect other parts of the body. Now a local hospital has a weapon in the fight against cancer that aims to cure you without affecting the rest of your body. Max Massey with that story. In recent years, what we found is that, you know, for those patients that get left side of breast cancer, they have an increased risk of cardiac toxicity, cardiac mortality. So we're curing the breast cancer, but 10, 15, 20 years down the line, they're developing coronary artery disease, other forms of heart disease. The problem is that the radiation can hit other parts of your body and other key organs. But now, this CRAD surface imaging software that doctors at the Mays Cancer Center use provides deep inspiration breath hold. Heart sparing, cardiac sparing for left sided breast cancer treatment. So breathe in deep. There you go, right there, hold it, hold it. It might seem complicated, but it's actually a very basic concept. When patients take a deep breath and they take a deep inspiration, their lungs expand, the diaphragm goes down and the heart pulls away, the heart pulls away from the breast. And so, by doing that, we're able then to safely deliver the radiation while pulling the heart away and sparing the heart from radiation dose. This unique form of radiation therapy is actually based off of these glasses. You put them on and it actually tells you where your breathing should be. What she's doing here is taking a deep inspiration and she's holding her breath within that green box. As long as she's keeping her breath within that green box, the heart is pulled away from the breast and we can deliver treatment safely. And don't worry, whenever you aren't in the quote unquote safe zone, there are precautions in place. When she exhales now, the beam turns off and we're able to stop treatment while she breathes normally for a period of time. This technique is not just for left-sided breast cancer patients. It's now being used to fight like pediatric cancer and sarcoma patients. And it certainly is the future of radiation, but it's also fast becoming the present. That was Max Massey reporting. Let's take a live look outside with Time Saver Traffic 35 at Loop 410. Always a bit of a slowdown here as you kind of hit 35 north and then 410 around by the Austin Highway exit. No major traffic accidents, though, to tell you about. But tell how cold it is. Mm -hmm. People are clutching to their coats today, Adam. Those temperatures dropped. 
Yeah, they dropped. I mean, we were about 35 degrees cooler today than what we had yesterday. I mean, a big difference when you compared some hourly readings. For a high temperature today, we made it up to 50 degrees very briefly, and we started the day at 40. But take a look at the readings right now. They're falling off. 41 at the airport in town, Randolph as well, Castroville 44. But you get into the hill country already in the 30s, even Bulverde 38. Rock Springs 32 along with Fredericksburg and Kerrville. Not only that, we've got a batch of moisture that's moving overhead. And this is going to continue to really overspread parts of South Texas. Notice the blue on the radar indicating there could be some areas of snow already. We'll talk about the odds of some wet flakes all around town in South Texas coming up. All right, thanks, Adam. More money to attract more riders via Metropolitan Transit is pointing to a bump in riders in this past year. As a reason, it should receive another one eighth cent worth of sales tax money. But a VIA official also tells City Hall reporter Garrett Berger that may not be the end of their funding needs. It's a simple idea and one VIA thinks is now being proven. Theory was that if we increased frequency enough, we would add additional ridership. The number of VIA riders had been falling for years until 2019 when it ticked up slightly, about 1.4%. It's even more if you just look at the last four months of the year. It's been about 5%. And that's been the biggest increase over the last four or five years. The transit agency says money from the city has allowed it to increase bus frequency, meaning buses come by more often on about 18 partnership routes. It credits that with helping turn things around. And on those routes where we increase frequency the most, it was even higher. It was 26 or 27 percent. Not surprisingly, riders on those routes say they like shorter waits. Yeah, I'm willing to save much more by day. Okay. Uh, that's more time on the bus. VIA says that it can expand to more routes, but it needs money. As part of a plan to fund transportation changes in the city, the mayor and others have been pushing to redirect a one-eighth of a cent sales tax towards VIA. If that happens, a VIA spokeswoman says that they estimate 80 to 90 percent of those tax dollars will go towards increasing bus frequency. But VIA's deputy CEO says that won't be enough initially to put all the routes on better service and indicated other funding efforts might be needed. We had gone to the legislature last year to see if we could ask for additional sales cap and uh, those efforts did not pan out. Uh, so we'll probably be thinking about going back in the next session. But for now, he says they're focusing on that one eighth of a cent. It's not part of the plan currently. We're going to wait and see how this turns out. Take one step at a time and then go from there. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. And coming up at six, the race for 2020 continues. Democratic candidates reacting to the results from Iowa while trying to now rally voters in New Hampshire. But first, we've always heard that nicotine is bad for us, but could it actually have some surprising health benefits? A closer look after the break. It is widely known that smoking cigarettes increases your chances of lung cancer, heart disease, and early death. And by now, most of us know that nicotine is the culprit that leads to the addiction to cigarettes. But here's what you may not know. As Ursula Perry reports, there's growing evidence that nicotine may actually have some surprising benefits. When Reese Dean started to experience changes in his mood, he never thought it would lead to a diagnosis of mild cognitive decline, the early stages of dementia. He's very irritable um, and, and explosive almost at times. Then his wife saw a flyer for the MIND study, which stands for Memory Improvement Through Nicotine Dosing. What nicotine does is it imitates the action of a normally occurring chemical in the brain that's important for signaling. It's called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is important for learning, memory, and attention. And nicotine can help imitate the actions of acetylcholine when it's being degraded by Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Newhouse treated 74 patients and with the skin patch version of nicotine on a daily basis for six months. He saw improvements in intention and memory. But with nicotine having a reputation for being bad for your health, could it really be good for your brain? Well, I'm a ex-smoker, so why do I want to put nicotine back in my system? Because 
that would make me want to crave a cigarette. And the answer seems to be that if you give it through the skin, you don't have any of those kinds of problems. Dr. Newhouse has not seen any habit-forming problems in his patients. And Mary Ann, who doesn't know whether her husband got the patch or the placebo in the ongoing study, says she got her husband back. Dr. Newhouse says that this is not an endorsement for smoking. It's also not a cure, but rather just a way to make life a little bit more enjoyable for those who have these type symptoms. However, this study is still open for new patients. If you have mild cognitive issues, you can go to www.mindstudy.org. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. All right, we know it was a cold one out there today, so everybody now wondering, how long is this gonna last? Yeah. Well, it's going to be a quick rebound temperature wise, but first we have to get through this evening and tomorrow morning where we're going to be feeling the chill and that chill combined with some moisture. They give us a few wet flakes because we're at least 30 degrees cooler than we were at this time yesterday. Exactly. Yeah. On average, we're about 35 degrees cooler now than this time yesterday. So we're feeling the effects of the cold front. We're not the only ones, of course. You, our friends off uh, in North Texas. They're feeling it even more. So I want to start with this. This is very interesting here. This is the latest snow cover analysis from NOAA. And look at this good portion of Texas, West Texas, Panhandle, North Texas here, even stretching into Oklahoma. About 7 to 12 inches of snow has fallen in that swath there just north of I-20. Actually, the city of Jayton recorded 12 inches of snow, and they've been still getting some since then. So <laughs> this cold front, a strong one, and with the moisture on the back side of it, definitely leaving its mark and kids are having fun just as close as San Angelo and points northward. They're enjoying it. So this is a 12 hour loop of the radar and the blue indicates the areas where we've been getting snow. Purple indicates a little bit of a wintry mix. So you go back 12 hours and see a lot of that action. And of course, we had more snow on top of it yesterday to add up to that nearly a foot in some parts of North Texas there, north of I-20. So for us, we're on the tail end of this system again, but there's one last hurrah with this upper disturbance, and that's this batch of moisture that's over Mexico right now. It's ejecting some energy, some moisture our way, and with our falling temperatures, I think it very well could coincide with uh, some Wintry precipitation, a little bit of a wintry mix. Now what you see on the radar screen right now is a little deceiving in these situations with the drier air that's in place, not just here at the ground, but even up above us in a little layer. You get some evaporation and sublimation of those snowflakes. And so what you see here in the hill country, most, if not all of it, actually is not making it to the ground right now. And we're just shooting into the clouds, picking up the precipitation in the clouds and some of that cloud cover. Now with the in more enhanced echoes over Lakey, wouldn't surprise me if we're getting a few flakes actually making it to the ground there, but so far, no reports of any precipitation making it to the ground yet. We've got more on the back side of this coming on in. That's going to continue to stream overhead. Our window of opportunity here in San Antonio, I think, is between about 9 p.m. and midnight. This is my favorite computer model. I like how it handles the, situa the situation. As we get to 9 p.m., some areas of snow likely in the hill country little to no accumulation and mainly just wet roads out there. But even in Bear County, I do think along and north of Highway 90 is where, yeah, we could see a few wet snowflakes mix in or even a brief changeover to just some heavy wet snow that melts as it hits the ground. Even parts of the I-35 corridor from here to Austin through about 11, 11 p.m. and midnight could see the same as well. Not expecting travel disruptions, just wet roadways, not white roadways. Then tomorrow, look, it's back to sunshine. All right, so this will get you through the evening. That light rain snow mix in some parts of our area from about 9 p.m. through midnight. We're still dealing with the wind. It's out of the north at 20 miles per hour. It's going to be gusty through the rest of the night. Temperatures right now 30s and 40s, but we'll drop down to freezing tomorrow morning. So we'll start the day at the freezing point 20s in the hill country and then sunny and only in the mid 50s by the afternoon. And here comes the rebound after a cold Friday morning in the 30s. We'll be back to 70 degrees in short sleeves Friday afternoon and all the way through the weekend. So short lived. Exactly. This is a quick hitting cold front. 
All right, thanks, Adam. All right, a big celebration all wrapped around a signature. Absolutely, lots of smiles around the San Antonio area today. It is a national signing day. We stopped by several schools, including Madison, South San, and Wagner. Plus, in the NFL, the Chiefs celebrated their Super Bowl 54 championship. Coming up. It's a great day for San Antonio area student athletes with dozens signing their national letters of intent to play at the next level. We started Madison High School where six student athletes put pen to paper. Ian Gill and Darian Gill will both play football for Hardin Simmons University. Deshaun Hagens will take his football skills to Southern Nazarene University. Football player Raymond Jackson signed with A&M Kingsville. Valen Penn will take his long snapping skills to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And Leah Hayes will play softball for Incarnate Word. The business part of it, uh, I want to major in business when I go to college, and that's probably the, the best part about UNLV and why I picked them. I really like the coaching staff there. They're um, very welcoming, and so is the rest of the team. It's local. It's a really good school. I think I could see myself doing really well there. Take you to South San High School where the Bobcats were all smiles this afternoon. Caitlin Rangel will play softball at Cisco Junior College. Defensive lineman Jordan Cerda will suit up for Hardin Simmons. And Jorge Munoz and Aaron Martinez are staying in town to play football for Incarnate Word. I chose Hardin Simmons University because when I went there, it felt like home and the, the community feels like home. The people are real genuine people and I feel like it can elevate my, elevate my game and, and I push my academics even further. The gym at Wagner High School was packed with Thunderbirds signing to play college baseball, football, and bowling. The T-Birds had a wonderful football season going 13-2 overall, advancing to the state semifinals. They went 8-0 in district to win the 13-5 AD1 crown. That team was fun and talented to watch, led by some of the top seniors in the area. It felt like home. They run the same offense as we do here, and it's just going to be an amazing uh, experience that we're going to have. It's exciting, you know, being the first person in my family to go to college, especially my immediate family. Um, um, I feel like for, for my family, this is very important to be able to see me do this, sign, and um, go on to bigger and better things. I feel like that's very important. It's very exciting because I never, like, I, I dreamed of stuff like this, but I never know it's going to come true. So it's very exciting. Check in now with the University of the Incarnate Word football team. Head coach Eric Morris added 11 players to his 2020 signing class, joining the nine future Cardinals who signed in December, bringing the class to 20. The class also has six transfers, including John Jay product Moses Reynolds, the younger brother of L.A. Rams wideout Josh Reynolds. Moses, a defensive back, transferred from Texas A&M and has one season of eligibility left. We're going to start him at corner, and um, and so our corner coach. I mean, if you look at him, just his physical presence and big, long. Um, you know, he's been through uh, a great strength program for the last four years at Texas A&M, and so um, our strength coach is already really happy about how strong he is in the weight room. So we're going to start him off at corner, and um, you know, obviously, if you can ever have a lockdown corner, um, it's it's one of the most uh, valuable things on the defensive side of the ball. So we'll put him there to start out. This season, the adversity we deal with, with the injuries. I mean, my knee was in the side of my leg, but we still went back and we won the Super Bowl. We the champs, baby. And the guy who Patrick Mahomes and the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs held their victory parade to celebrate winning it all for the first time in 50 years. There was plenty of beer chugging and dancing. More than one million fans were expected to attend and it looked like they all had a great time. It looked cold. It was, yeah. right? Yeah, suddenly 41 doesn't feel so bad when I see the scenes <laughs> exactly. out of Kansas City. Exactly. You. you got it. Larry. A lot more ahead. We'll be right back. In the race for 2020, Democratic candidates are still on the trail in New Hampshire. The top Iowa performers Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders are both frustrated the complete results haven't been released, while former Vice President Joe Biden reacting to his current fourth place standing in the election in Iowa by launching new attacks on his competitors. ABC's Trevor Alt has the story from Manchester, New Hampshire. As Democratic candidates crisscross New Hampshire, the two contenders who believe they won in Iowa are a bit frustrated by the slow rollout of the results. Senator Bernie Sanders Iowa. saying in a town hall Wednesday, I assume that one of these years that vote count will be completed. 
And Mayor Pete Buttigieg, who has a slight edge in the Iowa delegate count, telling ABC's Whit Johnson. This is one of the best, probably the best moments in the campaign in terms of uh, what we've been able to achieve since we got in. And it would, of course, have been good to have that officially verified and, and confirmed on the same day. While the results aren't yet final, former Vice President Joe Biden has responded to an apparent fourth place finish by launching far more pointed attacks, first criticizing Senator Sanders' ideology. Every Democrat will have to carry the label Senator Sanders has chose for himself. Donald Trump is desperate to, bend this, to bend, pin the socialist label of socialist, socialist, socialist on our party. We can't let him do that. And then directly taking on Buttigieg over his lack of experience. I do believe it's a risk to be just straight up with you for this party to nominate someone who's never held an office higher than mayor of a town of 100,000 people in Indiana. Wednesday is the final day the senators running for president had to jet back to Washington for President Trump's impeachment trial. No candidates dropped out of the race after the Iowa caucuses. The New Hampshire primary is expected to possibly start thinning the pack. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. The coronavirus continues to spread rapidly with more than 24,000 confirmed cases, most of them in China, and now a 12th case here in the United States, this one in Wisconsin. Americans have been evacuated from Wuhan, China on two U.S. chartered flights arriving at Travis Air Force Base in Northern California today. The passengers on one plane will be held there for quarantine for two weeks. The second plane refueled before continuing on to a Marine Corps air station in San Diego. A mother and her two young daughters on one of those flights after getting stuck in Wuhan on a trip to see family. Her husband speaking out today. They're exhausted. <laughs> They're, they're so tired. They've been at the airport for 24 hours. Abigail was crying whenever she would start to fall asleep. And meanwhile, in China, state television documenting a record 10-day construction of two new hospitals with thousands of beds that now stand ready for patients. Around America today, <clears throat> excuse me, a new twist in the search for a boy missing in Colorado Springs. Surveillance video appears to contradict statements the child's stepmother made to investigators. That video, which was supplied by a neighbor, shows 11-year-old Gannon Stock getting into a car with his stepmother, Leticia Stock, shortly after 10 a.m. on January 27th, the day Gannon disappeared. Stock returns at 2.19 p.m., but appears to be alone. She told police that Gannon vanished between 3.15 and 4.15 after leaving to go to a friend's house. The neighbor, whose security camera captured that video, showed it to Gannon's father. I walked over to, the, to his father's house, knocked on the door, and I said, here's some video that you might want to see. He broke down, he was like, she lied, and he was like, let's call the investigators. Deputies now looking closely at that footage, but say it's part of a larger puzzle. Again, and stepmom denies having anything to do with his disappearance. A police chase this morning along the Kansas City City, excuse me, the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl championship parade route. Police say a car broke through barricades set up for the parade and led police down the street before crashing, then smoking, then starting on fire. At one point, it appeared the car was headed for the crowd. Multiple police cars were prepared to block it. Officers used stop strips to flatten the tires before far forcing it to crash. Two suspects taken into custody. No weapons found in the car. There are no reports of any injuries. Police said the driver being investigated for intoxication. In Alabama, a police officer shot during a highway pursuit. That officer now being treated for what police say are critical injuries. Four suspects in custody, including the driver, Preston Johnson, who led that chase, and the three other people who were in the car with him, according to police. Johnson was also arrested back in October for driving a stolen car with drugs inside. In Turkey, three people dead, many more injured after a passenger plane skidded off a runway, broke apart and caught fire all during a landing at an airport in Istanbul. Ambulances and rescue teams were there at the scene to rescue passengers trying to escape through the split fuselage. Turkish health officials now reporting 179 people required medical care at multiple hospitals. In total, the plane was carrying 183 passengers. There's no word on what caused this incident, but weather radar showed a line of showers and thunderstorms moving through that area at the time.
Coming up in the buzz, why Coors Beer wants you to adopt a new dog and how they're willing to help. Plus, Madonna slapped with a lawsuit from her own fans. What the material girl did to make them turn against her. All right, it's the time of the show where we talk about what's coming up at 9 o'clock tonight on the KSAT News at 9. A lot going on, including perhaps some good news for teachers. That's right. There was a new program approved by legislators here in Texas that allows districts to take part in essentially a, a quiz, for lack of a better phrase, that can give teachers a bump in pay based on a lot of different factors, not just how long they've been in the district. But Somerset ISD has already had a similar program in place for the past 10 years. Our Tiffany Worthis is telling us a little bit more about that program and the one that the state is now implementing that would open the door to a lot of more teachers getting an increase in pay. And something we do every night at 9, it's the case at 9 at 9, where we run through some of the top stories, appropriately, nine of them. One of them, <laughs> Connecticut police say a new employee at a convenience store stole more than $17,000 worth of things, plus two vicious dogs taken off the street, and another story about dogs that made a daring escape from a fire that they may have actually started. It's the, part of the news at night. In the 9 and 9 all a wrap up of some big stories with great video, some some just different trending stories as well. Speaking of trending, what's on our website, ksat.com. Ferris Sabawi and I talk about the stories that you are clicking on today and you see a cockroach there that is going bonkers on our website. Apparently the San Antonio Zoo is offering some jilted folks an opportunity to name an X, name a cockroach rather after an X and then watch said cockroach be fed to an animal. I was going to say, I bet it comes to a not so pretty demise. Yeah. Adam Kasky checking the weather and uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed this taste of winter because it's not going to be around much longer. No, it's not going to last a whole much, you know, not all that much longer. But we do have even more winter to talk about here, at least for the short term. Now, temperatures are falling off, and as they fall off, we have some moisture moving in town. Right now we're 41. We'll be down in the 30s momentarily. And a little bit of a wintry mix is moving into parts of South Texas. We're already seeing some reports in the hill country of a little bit of sleet and some snow. We'll take a closer look at the radar and talk about this coming up. In the buzz today, Coors Light is encouraging you to ditch the stuffed animals this Valentine's Day and get a real dog instead. The beer company is offering $100 to cover dog adoption fees. The deal is available to the first 1,000 people who take advantage between now and February 21st. I like this idea. You must be of legal drinking age and submit a receipt of adoption to the beer company via text message. According to ASPCA, 6.5 million animals enter shelters each year. And the Humane Society says more than 2 million are healthy and adoptable. It's a good promo. Yeah. Fans are apparently suing Madonna for starting her concerts too late. One man in the lawsuit says he bought two tickets to a September concert for $800. The concert was scheduled to begin at 830, but Madonna didn't start performing until 1130. Wow. Another man says he purchased a ticket to an October concert for $321. And the singer took the stage two hours late. The two men claim they couldn't get a refund after. The lawsuit also states fans had to hand over their phones at the start of the show, so many couldn't arrange for rides home until after it was over. Both men are suing for breach of contract, loss of value, damages, and lawyer fees. No word from Madonna. Mm -mm. All right, it is time to honor those who work hard to accurately forecast and report the always changing, often unpredictable weather. Today is National Weather Persons Day. It honors everyone in the fields of meteorology, weather forecasting, and of course, broadcast meteorology. Of course, it also pays tribute to volunteer storm spotters, observers, and others who work in the meteorological field to celebrate the holiday. Send some good vibes to your weather person or anyone else working alongside them.
This actually goes back to, I believe, the early 1900s or something when the original observers with the Weather Bureau, you know, the observers would be scattered across the country and they'd have to telegraph their reports in to Washington, D.C. Then they draw the daily weather map or maps and that's all we had. Okay. Isn't that crazy? It's all you had back then. <laughs> One map. Maybe well, two we're, for we're a day. Sending How you do you? Good vibes yeah, I'm sending you day. good vibes. No, I mean, thank hopefully, you. this is a day you can embrace. Can, I'm, I'm absorbing the vibes right now. Yeah. He's just ready for Thursday. That's right, I am. <laughs> and I'm ready for a few wet snowflakes tonight. We've already have some reports of sleet and some snow. Yeah, moving into parts of the hill country. So let's get right to it and talk about it on the radar screen. And nothing in San Antonio, and don't get too excited. We're not seen any accumulations out there, but you see this swath of blue. Not all of that is actual snow and sleet making it to the ground. But remember uh, last time I was up here talking about the radar, we had this little enhanced dark area of blue that was moving through Real County and even Cliffy, clipping Uvalde County. Well, I pointed that out and sure enough, now we do have some reports. The Weather Service confirmed it that uh, we have some reports of actual snow that fell in Camp Wood, snow sleet, and even in Garner State Park. All right, so in northern Uvalde County there. So this little batch, this swath right here, that has confirmed frozen precipitation hitting the ground. A little bit of snow and sleet crossing into western Kerr County, crossing over Highway 39 there, and then it's going to continue its trek through western Kerr County and maybe just clip Hunt. If you're in the Hunt area, just keep an eye out. You may just get clipped by that little brief hit of wintry precipitation. Otherwise, we have more moisture that's still in Mexico that's pushing our way, and some of it I think will be on a trajectory to hit San Antonio, but most likely between about 9 p.m. and midnight. Our temperature will continue to fall through then, and that could support a little bit of a light wintry mix around here, but just some wet roadways, not white roadways. That's the key. Our future cast is indicating that as well, and I love this particular computer model. I think it does a pretty good job, and I think it's overdoing the intensity a bit. Nonetheless, it is showing this little purple and blue area, even in northern Bear County, and I think, yeah, that's absolutely possible for a brief period of time this evening and tonight, but then once we get to 11 o'clock midnight, that batch of moisture moves on out of town and then we clear out. So this narrow window from 9 p.m. to midnight, that's when we could have a little light rain snow mix in parts of Bear County, especially northern Bear County, north of Highway 90 there and in the hill country. Obviously, that's the most likely area to see it. Our temperatures locally will be falling down through the 30s this evening. And remember, even though it's above freezing at the ground here, you can still have snow, sleet, little ice pellets falling from the sky. It's what's above us that's important, the temperature profile above us. I've seen it snow actually when the ground temperature was well into the 40s before. It can happen. All right, already 30s in the hill country. 34, Bernie Stage, Comfort at 34, Kerrville 33, Lost Maples at 31. So that's where we have the coldest air. Meanwhile, 50 in Catula and Beeville, south of San Antonio. Sorry, kids, I don't see, think you'll see any wet snowflakes this evening. So by early tomorrow morning, at or below freezing, pretty much everywhere along and west of I-35, getting close to freezing in Catula, but some 20s in the hill country tomorrow. Then by the afternoon, we'll rebound nicely into the mid-50s, closer to the Rio Grande, about 60. So here in San Antonio, 32 in the morning, jacket weather again tomorrow, a little bit of a breeze, 56 by the afternoon, but at least we'll have a lot of sunshine. And then Friday, sunny, up to 70 degrees by the afternoon and remaining comfortable all the way through the upcoming weekend. So, yeah, keep an eye out. Send us your picks and whatnot, and, and we're not expecting anything to accumulate. No snowmen with this, but it's fun to see something. Yeah. yeah. Something a little different. You can just, right. you know, stick your tongue out and hope to catch exactly. something. Exactly. <laughs> In case you missed it, coming up next. That's what my daughter does, actually. <laughs> Mid to midweek, it is Wednesday, February 5th. More than a dozen bullets fly in this West Side parking lot overnight, hitting a man, also taking out some cars. Police say that they have gotten a call here to the Marbach Park Apartments. This is the 1800 block of Horrell Drive. Right around 2 o'clock this morning, they found a man who had been shot one time in the stomach. But again, police say more than a dozen shots were fired here in this parking lot, apparently at that man. They were not able to find out why this happened. And they say the victim is not cooperating. They 
did get calls from neighbors here, neighbors who heard the shots and also reported seeing a silver Cadillac leaving the scene. Meanwhile, two other men in the hospital with gunshot wounds this morning. An SAPD sergeant says one was shot in the leg, the other shot in the leg in wrist. It happened around 1230 this morning in the 7600 block of Stagecoach. Police say the victims are not answering any of their questions and they're still searching for information on a possible suspect. Police have not said if the two shootings are possibly connected. A homeowner is still assessing the damage after his house caught fire early this morning. Firefighters responded to the call in the 5700 block of Indian Sky around midnight. They say the back of the house caught fire. It was hard to reach to put it out, but they did manage to put it out. The homeowner made it out without any injuries. Hey, it's a special day today. It is National Weather Person's Day Yay. today. It's, it's really tricky sometimes to come up with a Especially forecast. here in Texas. Mm -hmm. I'll take my hug now. Oh, happy <laughs> meteorology <Wow>. day. <laughs> well, and a shout out to the other four folks that I did. <laughs> that green, that <laughs> Hallmark card just burst into flames, no didn't it? Nope, didn't, yeah. <laughs>